Hello everybody, I want to have an episode of Mixed Mowers and today's episode we're going to be checking out this um, still extendable uh, long reach hedge trimmer. It is a KM94RC. Um, the gentleman has bought it in for a service. Um, it is all running, it's not running as well as perhaps it should do. Um, but he said it just wants a service, so here's a service kit for it. The service kit I purchased about three weeks ago, three and a half weeks ago. Uh, off of eBay, off a Red Bull seller, and it, it just never turned up. They sent the second one, and that's now turned up. Um, so the bloke has been waiting for this uh, for about three weeks, which is which is not on. I have told him to come and get it and take it away, and I'll service it when the parts come in. But uh, he said I'll keep hold of it and uh, get it done. Incidentally, this is the first time I'm watching Mixed Mowers. Don't forget to hit the old subscribe button and whack the old bell. Back give you a notification to tell you one, I've released another video or two. I'm in fact on my weekly live stream on a Saturday night where you're free to come up on the panel and chat and have a good laugh. So uh, feel free to do that. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty, let's check out this steel hedge cutter, see if we can't get it serviced, see if we can't improve it to run a bit better. Okay, and here is the little um, the little trimmer, it's a little hedge trimmer. It's a, it's a little steel, um, which has come in, as I say. I seem to remember, either I've sold this gentleman something in the past, or um, I've repaired someone's kit before. He seemed very, very familiar. Um, now the idea of this one is to get this serviced. Um, and he he's looking to trade in two other steels. Um, one steel FS38, 40 or 50, one on the other. One very similar, it's a curved shaft trimmer. And also, um, uh, a steel hedge trimmer, just a handheld one. I don't know if it's a, a small blade or a big blade, not quite sure, but he's looking to do, do some kind of deal with me um, on it. Um, so it's not holding a lot of money for me, but it could do in, in the long run uh, if the other bits of kit are okay. It's been commercially used, so I dare say um, it's not in the best condition. The air filter is, uh, yeah, that's well, well done, well finished. <clears throat> so in the service kit you get uh, a new NGK spark plug, a new filter, and a new fuel line, um, which I'm going to be fitting. Um, I wash it. I leave the air filter out for now, um, only because when I um, want to tip the machine up, get the fuel out, I don't be tipping fuel into this. So if I can stay out for a minute, we can remove the spark plug HT lead, uh, uh, HT lead, and take the um, the spark plug off. I'm not sure what spark plugs in here. He says it is just a little bit boggy um, and not as, as well responsive as it used to be, but it is knocking on an age. Um, I dare say the air filter, well, the spark plug's loose for a start. That spark plug was moving in my hand. Look. Look, that, look. So it's got an NGK already in it. So that might have something to do with it, why it wasn't running quite so well. Um, it's been running really, really well. Looking really good. If I have a new spark plug to put in there, let me just grab a socket that's going to fit that because that's one of the, new, the newer style. And the spark plug I'm, sp I'm putting in is a NGK CMR 6H, which are the new little tiny tiddly widdly ones. They're really small. And they're about four and a half quid each um, off of Amazon, you know, somewhere like that. They're not cheap. So if I have a new spark plug put straight into there. And we're going to do it up nice and tight as well, because the other plug was was nowhere near where it should be. Don't go over mad because you will strip the thread. So nice and tight, snug it down. So that's that. Nice and simple, nice and quick. This uh, little covers will go back on once we snug the HT lead down. Little tiny screw there to hold it in place. It should sit in something like that. That's it. Snug that down. So I wasn't wait till tomorrow to do this one, but the bloke's been waiting long enough, <coughs> and I really, really don't want to be um, mucking the bloke about any more than what I have to. I'm going to take the fuel cap off, and uh, I'm surprised this was even running because the fuel filter is right at the top of the tank. And I mean right up here and it should be right down the bottom 
So there's the, uh, the filter. I'm going to take that off. That's the old one. And the new one goes on. That all looks good. Now what I want to do with that is I want to push that, because this tank is all the way down the bottom. And this fuel filter is right at the top. And it belongs, as I say, right down the bottom of the tank. You've got to put this little tiny plastic lug, which you've got to sort of bend over, sneak it past that, and then drop it right away down into the depths of the tank. I dare say it's probably forever filling fuel up with that. But now it's in its right proper place. It was way too far up. I can't find the other end to that. That goes in. That's cool. Let's have a quick little look to see what this butt, what these pull cord looks like. It's in good condition. I'm not going to put a new cord on just for the sake of it. If it doesn't need one, it doesn't need one. I was just as up to the price. A new um, air filter goes on, and then what I'm going to do, in fact, I'm just going to get a bit of WD-40 before I put any of this all together, put some tissue in here, and I'm just going to blow all this off. This is absolutely filthy through here, where it has been used commercially um, through here. I don't think it has a spark arrestor on this one. Uh, no, it doesn't. I'm going to get a bit of a clean up, a bit of an air compressor, and I'll come back before I put the air filter on. Okay, that's how I put the, filter, the old filter back in just whilst I cleaned it. Uh, but it's all been blown off now, all around by the tank and all the cooling fins and what have you. It needed doing, I couldn't leave it like it. Um, right, the old filter to the new filter is exactly the same, but look at the condition between the two. That's absolutely full up and that's not sucking any air in, full stop. So the new one goes in, just like so. And that should improve the performance of this machine uh, tenfold. That goes back on. And then we're just going to screw these up into position. So it's had a new spark plug, new air filter, new fuel line. Um, he, he said he doesn't want the blaze doing. He said the blaze are fine. He sharpens his own blaze, which is absolutely no drama to me at all. And it's not part of the actual service either, not a standard service. So this is just coming literally just for a, a standard service. Um, nothing other than that. This all screws down together. As I say, it did start, but it, it was just running poorly. Um, I'm going to take the, um, the gearbox plate off and put some grease in there. Uh, that is part of my standard service because it's used commercially. I need to make sure his blades are not, um, are not running too dry. <clears throat> so that's the standard service. Spark plug, pull cord is actually fine, doesn't need doing, so therefore don't touch. Uh, air filter has been done and the new um, fuel filter as well, which has now been put in the tank uh, properly where it should be. So let's now move on to the um, the gearbox. We'll have a gearbox apart and see if um, that needs any oil in there at all. So here's a gearbox side. Now these generally have a um, uh, a grease nipple, but I don't have a grease gun. It's something I need to purchase. So what I do is I take these bottom plates off instead, and I whip these off, and I'll come back to you when I've got them off. Okay, that's the um, all the screws undone now. I have a flat-headed driver. There's a little tiny hole just here. Give it a gentle prise up, and that will lift the gearbox casing. Very gently, there's a gasket on here. Just a bit by bit. You don't want to tear that gasket at extra cost to you. That comes off, and as we can see, there's not a great deal of grease in there. So. Um, I'm going to take some of this grease out, not all of it, because some of it is good. Um, I'm going to rag and I'm just going to literally going to take, run around and take some of this, um, this whole grease out. Oh, phone's ringing, two ticks. So that was my mum, she wanted a bit of a natter, like we, like we do. Um, so 
that's a gearbox now. I was picking it all out whilst I was on the phone. Whatever. Gearbox is now been completely re-greased with brand new grease in there. Um, sometimes you can over-grease these. Go a bit careful. Don't pack it in there, but it has to be. You know, it has to have quite a bit in. And that just goes straight back on. Sits on there. And then when you push it down, you might get a bit of excess come out, um, which tells you you have slightly overpacked it. So before you uh, screw it down, just push push the plate down to where it needs to be. And then just wipe that extra grease off. I hate working with grease, it just gets absolutely everywhere. That's that. And then literally we're gonna wind these six screws down, they're all six bolts down, they're all exactly the same length. It doesn't matter which one they're going. Like so. So let me get that done and I'll come back to you once I've screwed them little ones down. Okay, plate's all now on, as I just said, that's all done. Um, it's had a new spark plug, new oil filter, a new, new um, fuel filter, new air filter, gearbox has been greased up and what have you. And let's now see what it's doing. Lovely. That works exactly as it should do, and it's running better. Uh, it wasn't running as well as what it was earlier on. Bit of a clean up, and that one's done. Okay, so that's that little still um, extendable hedge trimmer now all up and running. It's actually not a bad little tool for what it is. It was a bit of a pickle to start, but it was a little tiny throttle adjustment on the uh, on the handle, which you can just, just push up and it adjusts itself. Um, it's not at all boggy. It's really responsive and doing exactly as it should do. It's just a shame it's taken three and a half weeks to, to service it because it only takes about half an hour to service it. So, um, terrible shame, but that's what it is. No um, other issues with the um, piece of equipment. I've run it up a bit more and it's running fine. I can't run it too much because it is not on at, at night time, so I don't be waking my neighbors up. But now I can contact the owner and say, it's all done, come and pick it up and uh, let's do this deal. Because he's got a deal on two more steel bits of equipment which are not running. Um, but if I can get those running, um, then um, I'll be quitting. in, that'd be cool. Incidentally, if this is your first time in watching Mixed Mowers, hit the old subscribe button and whack the old bell. Set your notifications to all and that will give you a notification to tell you that one, I've either released a video or two, I'm on my weekly live stream on a Saturday night where feel free to come up and join me and the rest of the guys and girls and have a good laugh on a Saturday night. Um, any questions, um, you know, I'll second down in the old comment section. My Amazon wish list is also down there. If you want to buy me tools or any spares for my channel, feel free. But apart from that, don't forget, um, I look forward to seeing you on my next episode of Mixed Mowers very, very soon. But until then, people, don't forget, more importantly, Take it easy.